Hello everyone, it's Lisa and I'd like to welcome you to my channel if this is your first time watching one of my tutorials. I would also like to say welcome back and thank you for those that have already taken advantage of all the great tutorials that I have created to support educators implement technology into their instruction. Whether you are new or you're a returnee, please click that subscribe button, the red one, if you have not already done so, and the click the notification bell as well. It's a little icon of a bell. This way you'll get notifications for any new resources that I post. Uh, one question that I have been seeing consistently in the Facebook page that I helped to moderate called the Bitmoji Craze for Educators is, okay, so I've created my classroom or my activity, my interactive classroom or activity now, how do I post it to Google Classroom so that my students can have access to it? Like, what's the best way to do this? So this video will not only demonstrate the different ways that you can share your interactive classroom and classrooms or activities with your students, but it's also going to show you what your students will see when they log in. So you'll get to see all of this from the student's perspective as well. Okay, um, we're just gonna get started. I already have pulled up here. This was just a copy of a banner that I had made for a uh, PD that I did on my YouTube channel. Uh, back in May. Um, so this, you see here I have my 3D Bitmojis and the custom clothing that I've made. So these are all links to video tutorials that I have made in the past. I also have the links to uh, the agenda that I made. So I have doc links here, I have video links here. Okay, so it's it's very, very interactive as you can see. So I'm going to share this as if I was going to share it with my students in my Google Classroom. So I've already pulled up my classroom here. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna to go to Classwork and I'm going to click Create. Now from here, if this, this, is, this is where you have some, some options. So if you would like to um, share this with your students under materials, you can, then they will always be able to go into materials and find your interactive classroom. If it's, you know, an assignment or an interactive activity, you can always, like I said, you can always just put it under, put, put it under assignments. But either way, they'll both have access to it. The option for you is as to, you know, whether, how, how you want your students to be able to pull it up. Okay, so I'm going to put mine under assignments. Okay, and I can just write interactive classroom, okay. Perfect. And then welcome to my class will work. Again, you'll just put whatever is best for you. Uh, now, the first way that I'm going to show all of you how to do this is to add it from your drive. So I'm going to click the add button. I'm going to go to Google Drive. Okay, and you'll see because I was just using it, it pops up under my, my recent. I don't really have to search for it, but if I needed to, I could always go up here in the search box and type in the name of the document. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click that. Okay, and you'll see here that this little box pops up with a little thumbnail of the file that you're using. Now over here on the right, there's a Dropbox, okay? If this was something that I only wanted students to be able to click on and just to be able to look at, I can say that I'm gonna keep it as students can view. However, if I go back to the document, something that I did for this one, uh, just to show you is I've created in my master slide, which I'll show you how to do quickly, I created a text box. If I wanted for you know participants from my my PD, or if this is an activity that you're doing with your students, for my students to be able to leave some kind of feedback, I can then go ahead and do this and say, let me know which item from the agenda you're most looking forward to. So if I come here to my slide one, right here is going to be the link to my agenda. Okay, um, so now students will be able to read this. Okay, and I've also done this with um, an author study. So I have a little li classroom library that I've linked to this. And then teachers are now also asking, so you know, how do I make it so that students are able to comment without them all writing on the same document? So to get the little text box, what I did was I went into slides and edit master. Okay, and then I just went into one of the layouts. I chose a background, okay. And then to get the box down here, um, 
this cannot be moved. And if I go back out of my master, you'll be able to see I can't move this. So your students won't be able to move it either. Okay, and that's how, in order to do that, what I did was I, like I said, I went into my master, okay? And then to do this one that they cannot move, I just clicked on the text box. I stretched and made myself a text box, okay? So I'm gonna delete that because I already have it. And then I typed in what you see here. Let me know which item from the agenda you're most looking forward to. Then to do this one that the students are able to click on and then write inside of, I went back to my, it says insert placeholder here, and I clicked on the little arrow to the right of it, okay? And then I chose body text placeholder. And then this is the box that pops up, okay? This, as you could see when we were not in the master slide, this does not show up when, when you're out of your master slide. It's just to show you that this is a, a placeholder. Okay, so that's how I did that. And so now in order to have the writing, pop up, okay, so that the student, or the, the slide pop up so students are able to write. What I did was, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna choose, make a copy for each student. This way, if you have 20 or 25 kids in your class and you want each of them to be able to respond to the items that were, were placed in, in the document, they're still able to do that. So you can use your interactive classroom, you can provide them with a document that they have to read and then provide them with a slide in which, you know, where they're able to, to respond. This way, it's interactive and also they're able to submit a response for you. Okay, so from there, make a copy for each student and then I would click assign, okay? So that's the first one. As soon as this is done, we're gonna go back. Now, if this was something where you just wanted students to be able to click on books and they weren't actually going to submit some kind of written assignment to you, another option that you can do is to download this as a PDF. So to do that, you're gonna to go to File, Download. You're going to choose PDF Document. That's downloading to the computer. Okay, and then I can go back to my classroom. Again, go to create an assignment or materials, whichever you choose. Okay. And I'm just going to write welcome just for time's sake. And then I'm going to go to add. And this time I'm going to go to file. And once this box pops up here with the options that you have, I am going to go to upload and then browse. Okay, so it's going to be the very last document that I downloaded. So it's right there in my recent. Just make sure I always say to pay attention to where you are saving things to your computer. Okay. Um, and for this one, because we had already said that, you know, I'm, I'm going to choose not to have students write, um, have to respond to, you know, anything written with this assignment, I can leave it as students can view file, because they'll still be able to use the interactive pieces of the assignment. So here we go, I'm going to hit assign. Okay, and then last but not least, we're going to go back. Uh, one more way that you can share this with students is by um, publishing to the web, okay? And if you've heard that before, that you're gonna be able to see after I log into the student account, what the three of them are going to look like. So here, I'm gonna click File. I'm gonna go down to Publish to the Web, okay? Um, and then it really depends. If you have only one slide, um, it really doesn't matter how many seconds, okay? You want, you know, obviously this to start up immediately. Um, you want students to be able to see it upon clicking on the link, okay? And then I'm going to copy this. And this is good for when you only have one slide. Um, if you have multiple slides, it's going to auto advance. So I'm gonna show that to you now, but if it was just one slide and you wanted students to be able to click on it, you're gonna see what's gonna happen when I, when I share this. So here we go, I copied the link. I'm gonna go back to my classroom one, one more time. I'm going to go ahead and hit create an assignment. And this is my interactive classroom. And I'm just gonna write publish. 
Okay, perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit. Oh. That would have bothered me if I hadn't changed it. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit link this time because now I have a link. I'm gonna paste that in and I'm gonna hit add link. Okay, and then there, you're gonna see there's gonna be a copy of the PDF banner. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit assign. Okay, now this is the part where we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna go into a different window so that I can enter the class as a student. Okay, so I'm going to hit my little waffle up here. I'm gonna to go to Google Classroom. Okay, and then I'm going to enter the classroom. So you'll see here I'm entered as a student because there's not an option for grades. Okay, I'm gonna click class, classwork and you'll see the three that I have just posted. So the very first one I posted just as an assignment. Okay, I can go to view and enter the classroom. And this is what it's going to look like for students. So whether or not they put it into present mode, I'm still able to click on the options, on um, the objects rather, and click underneath to enter the other pieces. So you'll see here, I can still click in. Well, this was a web quest that I had made. If you're interested in learning how to create web quests, I do have a video for that on my channel. Okay, here's my interactive classroom and as uh, my, sorry, interactive um, classroom library. And you can see if I click on the books, the links do pop up. So I still am able to get to all of the books. So yes, you can link a classroom library to your interactive classroom. That's another question that I see constantly. Okay, you'll see everything works. All right, so um, let me just go back here. accidentally closed out of it. Okay, so everything there works. And now as a student, you'll see if I click in here, I'm able to go ahead and type something in. Okay, and then from there, if I wanted to go back, I just wanna show you that the link still pops up for the agenda as well. So I could have gone in and I could have looked at that document. Could be any document that you choose. Um, like I said, if you just want your students to be able to respond to something, uh, if they respond within the document, obviously you're not going to see that, but the way around all of that is by just creating another slide within your interactive classroom for students to go ahead and respond to whatever questions that you have, okay? And then from there, um, like I said, if I had written something on there as a student, I'll have the, the option to Oh, one second. I have to click view. Okay. Oh, and the reason that this is popping up is because I am now in there as a teacher. I'm so sorry. Okay, so this is what happens then. Once you finish typing in, okay, um, for the students, as a student, you'll be able to then turn in the assignment. Okay, so if I type something in that text box, my favorite part of the agenda was, okay, so on and so forth, okay, and then I go back, I can always turn this in. Yes, I'm positive I wanna turn it in, okay. So that's what that looks like. Okay, now if I go back, we want to look at what it would look like if we had pu um, published it, uh, not published it to the web, if we had um, used the, the PDF. Okay. So if we go into classwork, you'll see that this is now gray because I've opened it and I've seen it. That will help students keep track of what they've already done and seen. Okay, here I'm going to go in and you'll see this one already pops up basically in, to, in present mode. Now, I'm no longer able to type in that box down at the bottom that I was when I posted it as a, a regular file. 
but if I click on the links above, they will automatically take me to the other documents. So this is the difference between posting um, as a regular link or file and posting it as a PDF that you've downloaded to your computer. Uh, you'll see here, I'm also able to still click and go to the agenda. So this is what it would look like if you clicked on a doc. Okay. Like I, like I said, again, this is not an interactive classroom I would have shared with students. It was just from a PD that I have done um, for my channel called Bitmoji Basics. The video for that is also available. Okay. And then if I go back, okay, I can mark it as done. Okay. Because I've already looked at it. And you'll see here, it, there's not an option to submit. Okay. Because there was nothing that was done with the file. And that's also a, what students are going to see that's going to look different. Now, again, if I go back and I just look at that last one that we did where I published it to the web, I'm going to click on it. It's going to automatically pop up. Okay. And you'll see here it's auto advancing because you don't have an option for it not to auto advance. So if it was just one slide and I, I clicked back to go back to the first one, um, if I click on anything, the links still work, so the students are still able to access anything that you shared. But again, if I go to that last slide, they're not able to click in the box to type anything. So that's one of the downfalls. So if you want students to respond and write, you're going to have to share it as the regular file. Um, otherwise, if it's just something where you want to post an interactive classroom that only has links and you don't need the students to do anything with it, and you don't want for them to see the document like this, where it's not in present mode, then you can publish it to the web if it's just one slide, or you can also um, post it as a PDF. So download it to your computer as a PDF and then post it that way to Google Classroom. Okay, I really hope that this video helped all of you. If you have questions, comment down below. Again, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. Take care, everyone.